sitting in front of an eight foot diameter yin yang on her wall <laughs> just to paint a picture I'm, am i no okay because <laughs> that's possible hey, let me lie <laughs> let me get away with some shit we're not video recording yet i do have i mean like i definitely do have a, a sort of east eastern motif happening in my apartment a, like a, there's a big scroll right there with like some japanese characters on it east meets west theme yes. a prime meridian apartment <laughs> <laughs> totally totally yeah um Anyway, so welcome to Free Advice. Yes, welcome to our show. <laughs> the podcast where we talk for a half an hour and you have no idea what you're listening to with Rob Zaleski. And Morgan Beard. Here we are, another week. Mm-hmm. You're driving in your car, you're listening to this, you're laying in your bed thinking, I don't want to be with my thoughts right now, but I, you know who I want to you know be with? whose thoughts I want to be with? <laughs> Morgan Beard and Rob Zaleski. <laughs> yeah, we're just like nestled right up next yeah. to you in your bed, just whisper in your ear, kind of like fetal position next to you saddled mm-hmm. up there just being like mm, hey honey i you learned don't have an, to think. a new way to hug recently what is it it's very intimate Ooh. but we're doing this to you if you're in bed listening <laughs> <laughs> we're both hugging you like this okay what is it okay. we're on either side of them that yes we're flounder hugging which is like Ooh. one arm across the body and okay. one leg across the body uh-huh yeah you know, so maybe they're laying on the listener you're on your back Morgan's on your left. Mr. JD listener. <laughs> yes. Uh, she's got a leg and an arm stretched across your uh-huh. front. I've got a leg and an arm stretched across your front. Are our legs and arms, like, are, are we grasping each other's arms, holding, pinning the listener to their mattress? Mm. Are our ankles interlocked? No, 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 no. I think okay. that I'm probably on the outside because yeah. I'm a little bit longer than you are. Okay. That, like, my arm would be Five above your arm. Longer. I'm five inches longer <laughs> when laid down compared to Morgan. <laughs> what upright? It's whole, totally different. At what age? I guess once you start walking, you you stop saying the baby's length and you start measuring their height, right? I think like, oh, I see what you mean. When they're when they're mostly like walking around, yeah. Versus like they're mostly a lump lying on the ground, yeah, yeah. Okay, but sure. I think it should be situational where if you're talking about your height <laughs> with somebody, but you're laying down, you should tell them that you're six feet long. <laughs> I like that. Right. So what do you do when you're at an angle? If someone tells you they're six feet tall when they're laying down, tell them, no, you're about a foot tall. <laughs> it's whatever the size of their feet Only are or their nose, whatever is their yeah. like highest point at right. that moment. Right. Their highest altitude. Yeah. From a horizontal position. Right. I love that. Sea level, I guess, of that person would be like the their abdomens. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I think so. Where the stomach, where the like stomach juices just kind of rest, mm-hmm. <laughs> the meniscus of the stomach juices. <laughs> That's yeah. great. I love that. Thank you. Um, we yeah, stumbled I'm gonna upon be the first something... adopter of that. <laughs> yeah, good. Okay. Yeah, if I remember. <laughs> well, you're right. <laughs> Let's listen to this a hundred no times. <laughs> Let's review this every morning so that we really yeah. memorize this material. <laughs> um. <laughs> we've memorized everything we've said so far. <laughs> We're reading off of a script next to the yin yang. Yeah. Yin yang. Yin, yin yang. yang. The yin yang twins <laughs> really made that difficult for a lot of the population. Ah, those assholes. Yeah. I mean, they're fine. They're fine people. I mean, we all love that song, Wait. Let me whisper in your ear. That's us right now. That song's called Wait. Yeah, it's called Wait. Mm-hmm. I thought it was Parentheses, called the whisper song. The whisper song. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I wanted to tell you about the new way to hug. <laughs> I'm sorry, I couldn't help myself. Please, you have the floor. You hug a person like normal, except Uh you put your face in their neck so that your like nose and all of your breathing holes are covered up. Oh. By the neck. Uh huh. The plastic bag hug. Mm, Yeah, sure. (laughs) Well, you can move it when you need to take another breath. Sure, sure, sure. It's supposed to really release like three times the oxytocin. So if you're looking for that hit of bonding with a person. Put your faces in each other's necks. Yeah, I think I do that pretty naturally. Do I think you? I do the flounder hug pretty. We're like, if you too. stuck out your tongue, you'd be licking the person's neck. Even Definitely, just a little. Yeah. Really? Yeah. And when that's done to me, I also there's as the recipient of that type of hug, mm-hmm. I feel a self consciousness about can they breathe. So I remembering that I go through that thought process pretty frequently cues me keys me into the fact that yes, I do do this. Frequently. Hopefully, they took a breath before going into that position. 
they're not starting an I mean, I think they exhaled are breathing lungs the whole time. Really? I'm just self conscious about. Not if you're squishing them against. Squishing them. If you're squishing face against skin, I think you're not breathing. Uh, all right. Well, I'll, I'll write back about it. I'll do it, and then I'll, you know, remember maybe to report back. One way to really release more oxytocin <laughs> is to hold in that position. And each of you give each other emergency tracheotomies so that you can continue (laughs) breathing, but your faces are just stuck against each other's necks. Emergency tracheotomies. You can use like a ballpoint pen. Okay. uh, Where you then remove the ink part of it, but you you can stab with it and then get the plastic tube in the person's throat so that they're able to keep breathing. Um, Pick a color that complements their skin tone if you can. (laughs) For the pen ink? Yeah, yeah. Okay. If uh, if they're a ginger, maybe like <laughs> a red teacher's grading pen. Okay. Yeah. Great. So um, where does that leave every other hair color but black? <laughs> mm, wait, what? Hair color? Mo- well, most like pen. Oh, okay, I'm thinking if, of skin you, you color. Got like if black, they have a reddish you got your black, you got your blue, you yeah. got your red pen pretty much. Sometimes you've got green. What I'm hearing is that more people should start dyeing their hair. So that they can have these deep hugs and then give each other emergency tracheotomies that don't <laughs> fuck up their skin tone too much by having like stray marks of the stabs that missed. Yeah. Yeah. This seems like the route to go. Yeah. Um, definitely. Yeah. What percentage of people do you think dye their hair an unnatural color? At some point in their life or. At any one moment. At any one moment. Yeah. Great question. Thank you. I would say. Um, and, and okay, again, I want to know the radius of this in the world, in the U S in LA specifically, cause that number is going to go up, 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 up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm thinking in the world. Okay. Um, let's see. Maybe, um, I want to say people with reasonable access to it. 3%, 2%, 2%. I'd say it's lower than that. Really? Okay. Yeah. I'm being optimistic, I guess. I think it's. One in five hundred or so. Okay. A diet an yeah. unnatural color. Yeah. Like there are enough people, women that have brown hair that dye their hair blonde. That that number is in the two or three percent. I would believe. Yeah. Or people that have gray hair that dye it whatever color they had before they were going gray. So you think hair dye overall is is even that low? Two to three percent. I don't. Oh no, that's higher. I, that's okay. higher. I think your average woman ha- it, has dyed well, hair. In a. In a first world situation. Yeah. Um, and like my hair's dyed. Yeah. Um, so, you know, in this room, 50%. <laughs> There's definitely a big gender difference on yeah. this. Yeah. The closest I've done is squeeze lemon juice into my hair. Cause <laughs> I, I was embarrassed about like actually asking to get it dyed, but I was interested in what it would look like if it was lighter. So you just had a little glimmer I squeezed of lemons. In there. Yeah. yeah. How did it go? Um, nothing really happened. I just had a sticky head and it was You stiff. didn't just get compliments out the wazoo? <laughs> no. <laughs> That's a bummer. No, I didn't. Damn. Yeah. It was all right, though. Okay. Well, next time, go a little bigger, then. Are you considering any... Let me ask you that. Yeah, Are yeah. you considering any major hair changes on the horizon? No. Cool. No. Um, <laughs> you want to flush that out of it? <laughs> I've thought... My dad has told me that if I grew my hair out... A little bit. I might have movie star good looks, but in my oh, current state, right. you know, you do what you want to do. But <laughs> if you you could have movie star good looks if you grew your hair out. Do um, you think that's a comment on his sense of failed potential for himself? Like mm. he wants you to achieve that pinnacle of, um, you know, stardom or um, superficial aspiration that he for himself didn't want or couldn't do. Maybe. Um, he's told me that he doesn't need to live vicariously through me in terms of having a football career. So using <laughs> well, that that data point, I might extrapolate that he sees that as a mistake that a lot of parents make. Yeah. And he's probably, if he was conscious of it, not trying to do that through uh, the handsomeness game of like, <laughs> I uh, make my son really handsome. I'm going to feel good and handsome then as a result. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But he did describe his own haircut when he told me how, what I could do to have movie star and go look, you know, slick it back. <laughs> <laughs> I'll slick it back. 
<laughs> I love you, Dad. If you're listening. To- <laughs> um, yeah. Well, it's, your hair yeah. looks good on you. It's yeah, just- you're go, Bob. It's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> um, I am reflecting on this as mm-hmm. we speak, obviously, and I feel very fortunate that I can say with high high level of confidence that my parents also did not um, have that lingering sense of needing their own dreams to be accomplished in the form of me. Um, and they very much encouraged me to pursue whatever I genuinely wanted to pursue. Mm -hmm. Um, which of course is why I'm sitting in LA (laughs) in in an apartment living alone and recording a podcast. You got bunnies. I'm fucking doing it. Right. I have bunnies, but, um, uh, they don't talk back. No, they don't talk. They don't pay any of the rent. I keep giving them hay and I keep being like, here's some green, you know, thinking it'll give them a hint, but they haven't taken it up yet. Um, what a stupid strategy. Look, I, I thought, you know, like a color kind of matching. <laughs> I've tried everything. I've tried everything. Okay. Um, I would love some free advice on the topic. How do I get my bunnies to pay the rent that I'm owed for living in my apartment? Would I mean, you... we lived in New York too. It was like a really high price. Would you let them set up webcams and do webcam shows? Oh, you know what? Were yeah, they... that would be great. You... I mean, I know that my mom would be on that channel all day. Really? <laughs> Just watching Cosmo. <laughs> would she pay for private shows? Would she pay? Probably not. Hmm. Um, probably not, but it is a, an interesting concept. Because um, then I could just tune in as yeah. well. And like watch Cosmo when I'm like out and about. Be fun. Strikes me as something that could really like take off in Korea and just have <laughs> ex- explosive, unexpected success. <laughs> the Cosmo show. Yeah. Cosmopolis. Um, yeah. Great. I'll start working on that as my next creative endeavor. <laughs> First my podcast and then Cosmo's web show. Here's something I, I think is an untapped space. Can't wait to hear We'll that. watch other people playing video games. Maybe you and I won't, but yeah, 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 yeah. Most people, people billions of adults do, I guess. Yeah, billions. <laughs> the entire world population. Fifty billion people watched someone playing video games last year. <laughs> That's an incredible you know, statistic. When you Keep correct going. for inflation, right? So, um, <laughs> yeah. What about watching people scrolling through things on their phones? That's really funny, right? So would and the camera get, be above Same the as thumb. video games. You get the main screen view that they're seeing and you get yeah. a little picture-in-picture picture view of the person as they're looking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With that just a little glow, slight glow on their forehead. Yeah. That sounds great. And they probably are commenting too. I think yeah. that it's like you can watch me scroll through Reddit face down on my bed <laughs> and make little sounds of amusement or groans, yeah. you know. I love, I love the idea of hearing someone say the like little things that they – that, that are, are somehow beyond the significance of just being a thought in their head, but they, they're not beyond the significance of actually completing the sentence. Like yeah. where you're like, what is, the, what, what is he doing? <laughs> right. Why don't I, you know, like the, yes. those moments would be really fun to participate in culturally, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think we are moving towards this, like wanting to see people in a very raw, unfiltered kind of way. Um, but there's definitely a line where it's just not entertaining. It's boring. And and people complain about, you know, having to view people's like Snapchat stories at concerts or like Instagram stories Mm -hmm. doing this. I don't even know what's called Snapchat stories. I got Snapchat a really long time ago. So I'm showing my true colors as someone who doesn't know what the fuck they're talking about. But, um, you know, people complain that like, I don't want this content. Like, do not send me this content. I don't care that you are at a concert. Stop posting pictures of your breakfast. Yeah. I hear that one a lot. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, what are the new pools of content that people that are weird and sort of intimate like that? Yeah. But people actually want to hear because they're, they haven't been popularized yet. I wonder. I think like time wasting activities. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's that video games require such skill that it's interesting mm-hmm. to watch them. So how could you make uh, browsing through your social media or browsing through news articles <laughs> more? <laughs> It'd be like a very low production value version of last week tonight with with John Oliver. Right. You know, you'd be reading the news <laughs> and just like your news. improvising. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, giving your take, just re- kind of making reaction noises. Yeah, yeah. There would have to be some kind of like engagement 
question maybe of like, okay, I'm going to scroll through Instagram and I'm going to comment something interesting on every single photo I see. Or like, you know, it has to have some kind of gamification that makes it like a challenge, I would think. I'm thinking of this as like a non-exciting thing for people to play on their second monitor while they're animating on a Wacom Cintiq pad. I used to work in an animation studio (laughs) and I would notice a lot of the animators. No big deal. Okay. They have this routine task that they have to do, which is draw a character with a slightly different movement in each frame. You know, they're redrawing the same thing over and over again all day, many of them. And so they would have a second monitor where someone's playing video games Mm -hmm. and it's kind of like keeping a low level of stimulation that they're, they're paying attention to both tasks at once. Got it. And so I can imagine a desire to like, scroll through reddit or some news site check facebook whatever it is while you're working but actually doing that on your phone what if like it requires the thumb of it is like somebody directing that attention for you you're no longer making the decisions of when to move on from reading this thing or tapping that link or whatever it's just seeing somebody else going down the rabbit hole yeah um what if you were just watching someone draft a really long text message? <laughs> <laughs> D- delete shit. Like, should I say that? Like, hmm, I wonder, like, ha- oh, is this tone too strong here? Is and there like, an emoji with, for that animal? Is my ask clear? Yeah. <laughs> that would be kind of funny. Yeah, like, for me, right. the psychology of that is interesting. Because mm-hmm. it's a process I'm always engaging right. in. And then sometimes you get to the end of some long ass thing and you're like, oh my God, this is so overwrought. And you yeah. just delete the whole thing and you're like, what's up? <laughs> you know? <laughs> right. <laughs> Just to check in. Yeah. Yeah. Whole lots, whole lot of stuff to just kind of think about for no reason. Yeah. Um, but it kind of, we had a conversation like months ago about, uh, does anyone yet, has anyone yet, uh, does anyone have the monopoly on a show that's just happening all the time? That's their life. Oh yeah. Yeah. I want to, I want to resurface that conversation in a more public way. What's the person Who's right. had the highest percentage of their living hours observed or filmed? Yeah, uh, broadcast. Yeah, Bro- I think broadcast. Who, is who's important. the Truman Show? There has to be an audience. Yeah, who's who's the person who's closest to Jim Carrey in, in the Truman Show? And would something would someone who was signing away their entire every minute of their life to be live what live streamed? Mm-hmm. Um, would that take off? Um, like, you know, while they were sleeping, they would just be sleeping and there would be people probably popping in and tuning in at at some length for that. Cause that could be soothing. That could be, you know, some kind of weird voyeuristic thing that they want to do. Um, or just like as a touch point of reality, like, okay, you know, Phil is sleeping now. I was thinking his name would be Bill. That's interesting. That's fascinating. That's close. Wow. Oh, 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 man, jeez. Hi, Phil. Um, yeah, yeah. So, well, and then how much censorship would there be if Phil is having sex? I think you show it all. Yeah. You have to. I think you have to. That's part of the project. Yeah. There could be like a certain Phil providers, you know, that like repackage Phil. They'll yeah. just make their own highlight streams that if uh, you want to watch an hour of Phil ESPN a day. The ESPN of Phil. Exactly. Yeah. That they do the, their own repackaging of the the raw feed and yeah. maybe they have commentators and With analysis like, locuses loci yeah of like okay we show phil when he is doing something like sexy we yeah. sh- we're the station that shows all the phil stuff phil that's eats. education educational yeah. here's <laughs> phil having fun it's like <laughs> phil in his good moments only and it goes off the air for a couple and then seasons there's like and sad like, oh, no. phil. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> yeah how phil Deals the with blue his, period of his, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's the type of thing that people would watch if other people were watching to have mm. a reference point. Yeah. These like cultural monoliths, I think we kind of have less and less mm-hmm. of um, because there's just so much content and so much diversity in uh, what's available. Because like, you know, when they're was only, you know, a few radio stations or like a few television stations that like your average American household just tuned into and like everybody saw the this yeah. broadcast or everybody saw that. Um I think the same thing was with happened with music kind of. Like there were these major icons like Elvis where it's just like everybody just knew. Is the most um accessible populist form an image then? Mm. Like most people have probably consumed 
the picture of mm. Coca-Cola brand. Mm. You know, it's, if you mm-hmm. wanted um, to make something that everybody could have their own reaction to and just penetrated the minds of most people, yeah. it's an image, right? It's Does not it a move? song. It's not a video. It's not a TV show or a radio what? broadcast. So, okay, so, so one still image versus yeah. like a video. A piece of art. I'm thinking one, that's like a like visual the Mona art. Mona Lisa. That's... Mona Lisa. Wow. I was still... <laughs> yeah, the, the, the idea Lisa. of the cultural monolith is still the yeah. heading that's at the top of my brain. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the Mona Lisa. I think that that just stands in for art, though. It's not like mm. something that people have their own opinion on. If you want to make something yeah. that... Okay, I'm thinking of that photo of the entire Earth. That's something oh, okay. that most people have seen, that mm-hmm. first image that was released by NASA. Mm-hmm. That was probably a very widely viewed picture. That yeah, and it was the first time that anyone, on a broad scale, could have that type of perspective mm-hmm. about our smallness and, um, and our bigness at the same time. Like I remember, you know, I um, I was a photography minor in college. Yes. <laughs> um, and a visual studies major, as I've mentioned before on the podcast. Uh, but basically, what that meant is I just looked at visual culture in many different ways and i'm saying it with this like you know sarcastic voice but actually it was like the best fucking education um and you know we talked a lot about uh you know the significance of one certain image and and Mm -hmm. how did it which one uh, what which image oh i mean i uh, many different ones but like you know uh in terms of photo history in terms of like history history um, what are the images that like many people, uh, got to see that really shaped culture as a result of seeing them? And that's one of the, one, one of the images, the photo of the earth, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. the campaign for it was started by a guy who had done LSD on his mm. roof in San Francisco. He had this idea. Fuck yeah. Uh, and I think originally he was like, why haven't they shown us a photo of the whole mm. earth yet? Why haven't they let us see yeah. one? And then he was like, all right, make it a little less paranoid, the wording. <laughs> uh, like, let's take a photo of the entire earth or something like that. He started passing out stickers and he got banned from college campuses, but he started selling T-shirts and the idea really took off and uh, yeah. a movement grew to yeah. ask for a photo of the earth. And I just wonder... If our distribution channels and mm-hmm. the content, there's just too many, too much that that any one thing couldn't kind of really captivate the entire world at once anymore. I mean, although, you know, even the time that I'm speaking of back to like, you know, like the 50s or whatever, when yeah. I'm saying like, oh, everybody was listening to Elvis. It's like, OK, everybody in the first world, <laughs> you know, right? <laughs> We're, there's still a, a, a quite large population that is not touched by mainstream media that I'm ignoring in a very sort of white centric way, not white centric necessarily America's American centric. Yeah. Um, but isn't that even fa- more fascinating that I just had that, that as I, as if those are synonyms, white centric and American centric culture that's unspoken that popular cult, commercial culture, things like the transformer movies, mm-hmm. they do have a pretty broad yeah. penetration though. It's recognizable. I'd mm-hmm. assume for most people on the planet. Yeah. If you showed them like a Transformers. Yeah. 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 So are you saying with your broader question of, of huh. which type of medium yeah. has the possibility in this way in this day and age? Well, uh, I, it's got to be images. Uh, I'm, I don't think that that's really a question just because it's – you have to listen to a whole song. It takes time. But What about a vine? Like a vine. not a vine specifically <laughs> yeah. but like, you know, a very short – because uh, I think like GIF. film and f- film and video, GIF also with, known with as sound, film, yeah. yes, um, you know, is something we're now accustomed to, and it can be very short to meet the, that sort of attention span problem. Um, it just can't be printed and have a physical reproduction, like a song. You could have yeah. people cover and play live without a device, yeah. but it requires a video and audio system that's more complicated than like the Coca Cola logo you can put on a mm-hmm. sticker and slap it on a bus. I have something interesting. Yeah. Um, so a while back, one of my clients was telling me about this particular, um, like, quote unquote, artist. It's not really an art. It's like a I, – I can't think of anything comparable uh, in, like, American culture. Um, but it's basically this 
this Japanese character that uh, the the voice is like a robot and it's mm-hmm. this musical artist and this entity like releases songs I think on its own but it's like not a human voice at all and then there are also like there's a whole culture that's come up around um, you create your own videos of this character like singing a song um, and you can generate any kind of song that you want it's all like robotic um, and so that's really taken off and I, I was thinking about how interesting that is that it's not really a song. It's not really a person. It's not really a company. It's just like a cultural entity that has that that people can participate in in this way. It's a digital it's voice. Is it like yeah. some? Is there a human who's recorded all of the sounds and then it's no. just sampling no. that? No. no, no, no. Okay, which is what I think is so interesting about it. But then people love it, and so they make their own content as that voice. Like, Where they do the visuals, voice, or does it also have a character design? So it has a character. Yeah, okay. so it's like a character, an animated character. And you can use that as a puppet and like make yes. your own videos with yes, that? Yes, I believe so. Oh, okay, cool. And so I wish I knew what it was called, but I just think it's fascinating that like that degree of sort of participation and like media creation took off in the way that it did. Um, and it made me think about like what is going to be popular in the future. And it's... Apparently, it's been going for a while. Um, I'm going to have to do some research and figure out what it is, but um, like what the name of it is, because it's so interesting. Um, but it, it, it remains popular because it's completely like not attached to, it's, you know, not a company. It's not a, a you know what I mean? It's not a mm-hmm. human. It's not a company. It can, it can evolve as culture evolves because it's only this kind of stand in. And I wonder what that tells us about where culture is going and like popular media. Um, more customization and mm-hmm. user interaction, mm-hmm. I think. Um, the meme evolution that you start with a base idea and then everybody does their own Gungam mm-hmm. style parody, mm-hmm. for instance. Yeah. I think that's where it's headed. And there's like, the other interesting component to me is like the timelessness of it. Like it can, people are continually incentivized to engage with it because they can make it their own in any way that they want. And so then it never becomes linked uh, specifically to any kind of like era or, um, you know, it, it doesn't age in a way. Yeah. Which I think is fascinating. I'm sure that the trend, like people will lose interest in it. Mm-hmm. Or it'll be replaced by another mm-hmm. thing that's a little different. Sure. So it it will probably be dated in the way that a Gungam style parody is mm-hmm. dated today. Mm-hmm. But like there is no sigh, you know. There's no sigh yeah, behind right. it. There's no yeah. dance specifically. Um, it's interesting. But it's it's like Clippy, the paperclip from Microsoft Word. <laughs> he feels dated, right? <laughs> Yeah, well, he's linked specifically to Microsoft Word. Which is still around and being used, but I don't think that they use Clippy no more. No, so they just have no, a better no. help R- feature. R- I- yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's a very open source thing is kind of what I'm trying mm-hmm. to get at. And so I wonder, like, what do you have to extract from something that makes it continue to have its own momentum in that way? Hmm. It's fascinating. I know you don't need to answer that question, but yeah, just everybody take a minute and think about it. <laughs> Okay, they they've thought about it. They've thought about it. They've got their own answer. What's Rob's answer? Does Rob have? He said answer? I didn't have to. Oh, okay, I'm so then never mind. Should we uh should we get some advice? I would love to. Let's yes. Can do it. So here we've got the next door neighbor. Mm-hmm. Uh, neighbor spelled O U R for our ah, reference. Ah, so potentially we're dealing with uh, someone in the UK or Australia, one of those countries that speaks English but we think they're a little fancier than us. Right. Yeah. Is it possible to have a flirtatious personality? Mm. Basically, title. Mm -hmm. To start off, yes, I, female, do not have a lot of dating experience. Generally, I come off as very positive, bubbly, and I tend to laugh at everything. This applies to my interactions with everyone, regardless of gender. 
Mm-hmm. I'm also a strong eye contact holder because <laughs> I want others to know I'm actively listening. Mm. Now, this is problematic and I don't blame anyone because guys tend to think I'm interested in them. I do not show any sort of flirtatious body language. I keep my hands to myself, lol, double exclamation point, and stay at reasonable distances. To make matters worse, I simple cannot hang out one-on-one with any guy without hearing from other people that the guy thought it was something more. Yeah. Am I, am I oblivious or should I be telling every guy I meet that I'm not interested? That just makes me sound narcissistic. I'm starting to think I'm just subconsciously thirsty as fuck. <laughs> awareness of this person is amazing i'm sorry continue i'm also not looking to date so all of this just makes me appear like a player Mm. Jeez, all of this sounds like teenage drama shit and i'm not about that life please advise did we have an age nope okay i'm guessing uh late teens okay okay let's Uh, assume 19 okay okay sure she says this sounds like teenage drama shit so maybe she but thinks that she's past that, but right, identifying which, with it. You know, 19 okay, you want to do 20? Is still a teenager. I guess my thought is like, in order to say that, perhaps you need, I was thinking it needed to be someone older saying, I don't want to be lumped into this category, but gotcha. you're saying they're self-conscious that they are maybe. And we can't assume. Yeah. Let's talk to all women. Okay. Let's talk to them. Um, all right. Uh, I have a lot to say and it's hard to know where to start, but... Um, I wonder also about, um, is this person physically attractive? Because I think often people that are physically attractive, um, tend to elicit a response in other people where it's like, uh, the other person like overly assumes because of their own desire for Mm -hmm. them. It's like a projection thing um, that there's a there's a chemistry or some kind of interest because they have it. Um, and so what's the user's name? My neighbor, the next door, neighbor. the next door neighbor. Um, I wonder if, you know, th- that obstacle is a is another sort of layer to this where it's like, again, like you say, it's not something that you're doing consciously. It's just other people's perceptions of it, perhaps inflated by their desire for that to be the outcome. Mm-hmm. Um, I would, I can say more about it, but I want to give you the opportunity to weigh in on that. Uh, yes. I think if you're attractive, people will be wishing or projecting Mm -hmm. that you are attracted to them. Mm -hmm. And this is okay. I think, uh, the question was, is it possible to just have a naturally flirtatious personality? I think that you don't want blame for this you want to be told Mm -hmm. that it's just a a unchangeable part of your temperament so that Mm. i think the issue here is um judgment coming from leading people on Mm -hmm. maybe there are other people that are mean or casting uh throwing shade your way Mm. yeah use her language (laughs) good job speak to the kids (laughs) you know um maybe some people SMH whenever <laughs> you s- smile. <laughs> Sorry. Um, for the for the over 40s, yeah. I have no idea, listening to this podcast and me, uh, when you say SMH, you mean shaking my head? What do you mean? Yeah. Okay. I believe. So like aren't into it. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, and that's okay and something that you're going to have to deal with. Yeah. Anyone who's yeah. good at something has to deal with people not liking them being good at that. Yeah. Yeah. They're going to have their own response to you. This goes for anything. Anyone yeah. all the time, anyone you're interacting with is bringing their own shit to the table. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's a sort of an extractable part of relating to anyone. Um, and I think, yeah, it does sound like uh, this person is kind of looking for someone to be like, yes, that's okay. It's not your fault. It's not their fault necessarily. Um, but it's, it's, it can be a part of, um, just the package of the way that you show up verbally, non-verbally, all that stuff, body language, um, 
if you're wearing perfume, someone can have a feeling about that. Mm -hmm. Um, it, it gets into a little bit of a sort of victim blaming territory of, you know, Oh, she was flirting with me because she was wearing, she smelled good. She was flirting with me because she was wearing this or that article of clothing. Um, and so I think, you know, thankfully we're moving away from people feeling that more frequently. Um, and I think that there is, while that's true, while there are things that are, uh, that other people are going to pick up about you and project onto you that you have no control over, um, if you wish to generate a different outcome, if you don't wish to be interpreted as flirtatious, uh, there are some things that you can do. Um, but again, that's only if you're asking to do it. I'm sure there's nothing unacceptable or... Um, I believe so, because she says, yeah. should I just come right out and tell guys that I'm not interested in them, right. but that makes me feel so narcissistic. Yeah, to assume that. Right, yeah. Right. You don't have to do that. You right. Can, I agree. You can wait yeah. until they make an explicit move or they ask you to do something, and then you can say, like, I'm I'd like to, as a friend, mm -hmm. um, make something clear like that if you do want to talk to them more or mm -hmm. that you're not interested. Yeah. Yeah. And that's okay. I think yeah. it's important to ask yourself how you feel about being rejected because if it's very difficult mm -hmm. for you to hear no from somebody then you might be over inflating how bad that hurts other people yeah that's a great point yeah um yeah I, I, the your awareness of this potential dynamic mm -hmm. can definitely influence the way that you show up can make you more self-conscious um it can make you not want to engage in these types of situations or just avoid, you know, avoiding right. certain people that frequently you run into this problem with. Um, yeah, just avoiding those uncomfortable relational dynamics. And I think if you talk to different women, everybody has sort of similar but unique ways of dealing with this exact problem. Like mm -hmm. some people just sort of, you know, adopt resting bitch face or kind of turn their niceness down a little bit, um, knowing that people are going to read too much into it. Um, I've, you know, I, on an unconscious level, I've definitely used that strategy myself. Um, you know, you kind of do different things with your posture. Yeah. Um, you do different things with the cadence of your voice, maybe the eye contact, as you mentioned, that kind of you're hoping to signal rejection in a way, or you're hoping to signal I'm not open as open as you might like me to mm -hmm. be um, in, in a way where it's not outright rejection that you have to, uh, you know, broach verbally specifically, Hey, I'm not interested. Cause that, yeah, you don't want to, you don't want to walk around wearing a t-shirt. That's like, I think I'm hot shit. Like you probably do too. No, thank you. You know? Yeah. Um, but it is so much work like emotionally and energetically having to feel like you're taking on the emotions of everyone you talk to because they're they're potentially someone that's going to flirt with you in a way that you don't want. And so I totally feel you on just yeah, it sucks. It's a pain in the fucking ass to like, you know, walk around and feel like at any moment someone could just kind of grab your attention and yeah. and expect something from you that you're not signaling that you want that. Well, she's saying I believe that she likes to pay attention to people mm -hmm. and yeah. make strong eye contact, yeah. really get to know them regardless of their gender, regardless of whether mm -hmm. she finds them sexually interesting mm -hmm. or not. And a lot of people uh, find that refreshing and are going to be seduced by it because it's so rare. So often it feels like people are dealing with us mechanically and someone who takes the time to want to get to know you that might be the first time that uh, your your conversation partner has experienced that in years. Um, so it makes sense. I think it's something that you want to be in control of based on your current confidence in yourself and your ability to reject people easily and turn it down in some situations where you don't want to interact with people more. I think that flirting is a redistribution of self-confidence. And when you have extra, when you feel like you can um, you can deal with people rejecting you and you rejecting them because you have something else going on that you, it's not like your primary focus, then it's a nice thing to give extra attention to people, notice things about them, 
I think a compliment on on something that this is a bit of a side note, but a oh, good boy. compliment. That's what we're all about. Okay, I think a good compliment is uh, on something that someone is in control of, that uh, they agree with you, and that they don't often hear from other people, that they don't think that other people are noticing. Yeah. If it's those yeah. three things, then I think people really enjoy hearing that. Mm-hmm. Um, so for women, if, if men want to compliment a woman's body part, the only thing that they're really like daily in control of is their hair or their makeup. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you, it's often uh, not as appreciated to compliment a woman's butt. Yeah, you want to choose something that's not inherently sexual. Yeah. Um, uh, unless you have the type of relationship with that person where that makes sense. But sure. don't assume that you have it with a stranger. Definitely don't. Um, the other thing about complimenting Unless a you're woman, at a sex party or something. I don't know. <laughs> it depends. It totally depends in yes, most that's situations. that's a different context yeah, for yeah. sure. Um, but I think the other thing about complimenting women um, that is tough is yeah. really anything that's appearance based because we are now so hyper aware of, mm-hmm. wow, women are really valued culturally for the way that we look. Sure. And that's something that we're all trying to move away from. Um, so that's that category of, uh, things that they don't think other people notice often. So pretty much any physical compliment to a woman right. who's aware of the right. advertisements and the right. culture around her is going to not meet that criteria well, of something that they don't think other people are seeing. And it's colluding with the idea that yeah. your worth is made up by your appearance. Right. And so that to me is the most offensive part of an appearance based compliment. Um, I, I don't know. People really have in this post me too era complained about, uh, when people tell you, people talk about your smile and like smile more. And, and I get that. I get that for sure. Um, but as someone who no, not trying to sound any type of way, but people do compliment my smile frequently. Um, I tend to view it through the lens of they're noticing my expression of joy. They're noticing a purity and an authenticity mm-hmm. to my expression of joy. And it's not like a comment on I should have to show up as someone happy Mm because often I do not (laughs) and I'm cool with that and the world better get cool with it. Um, but you know, they're, they're seeing that I'm, or they're witnessing that I'm in a state of joy and there's something that, that, that is nice. Um, but again, that walks the line of, is it appearance based or is it about like your energy? I think that's a great compliment when you can say compliment a person's energy, Yes, yes. maybe making it an active thing. Like you're smiling, brightens up the room, helps other people have a good time. Your, your yeah. laughter puts other people at ease. Yeah. Something yeah. like that. Notice. Yeah. Also noticing like, yeah. How does that affect yeah. the people around her? Um, is really interesting. Cause it may be something that she's doing very intentionally and then she will feel validated and mm-hmm. being like, ah, yes, that expression I tried was trying to do was noticed. Or it may be something that she's doing inadvertently. That might be a delightful surprise. Um, if it's inadvertent though, you could run the risk of kind of offending her that way. But, right. um, but maybe it's something that she at the moment has a negative reaction to and then later reflects and goes, oh, actually that isn't the type of energy I'm aspiring to put out there and I'll tinker with what I'm doing in mm-hmm. order to more accurately translate my internal vision of myself and what the world is seeing, which I think kind of takes us back to this person's question of, you know, what are the things that she might be able to do to create a more, uh, you know, clear translation of her truest expression, which may be flirtatious and that's totally fine, um, you know, versus how she's actually being perceived. Um, Because I think that we're saying you have no obligation whatsoever to change what you're doing, how you're showing up with these men or anyone who interprets your behavior as flirtatious. However... If you are expressing an interest in wanting to tinker with that, there are a bunch of ways you can do it. Um, I cont- what about the imaginary boyfriend name drop? <laughs> what do you think about that? If you've ever had a boyfriend, you could just refer to them as your boyfriend instead of your ex. Yeah, well, what's... And it's not really lying either. What's interesting is, yeah, you, you only realize, I mean, I only like realized, oh, that works. Once I had a boyfriend, I just said it. It was the truth. Mm-hmm. And then you, as soon as you do that, you're like, oh, what a nice trick. I can just say that all the time. Here's another bit of free advice. Yeah. Um, I used to live in New York and every time you walk through Union Square, um, and you get this in LA too, 
anytime you like walk through one of these kind of places, yeah. someone comes up to you with a petition to do this, do that, yeah. adopt a child, save a hungry tiger. Just you tell know. him you have a boyfriend. <laughs> yeah. You just be like, I have a boyfriend. I'm busy. Feeding Sorry. Him. Take it. No. <laughs> well, I learned this because I'm yeah. a very, I have pretty weak sales resistance and okay. I'm like helping. And so I've been on the way to a train at Penn station, like leaving, I'm running late. I yeah. ended up sponsoring a child. You get a lot of there. emails. I get real involved. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, but so that particular um, nonprofit, Children International or something that very creatively named. Um, then later, while I was walking through Union Square, approached me and I actually said, oh, I already donate or I already do whatever, whatever. And they were like, all right, and gave me a high five. And then I was like, wow, now I have this great tool. So anytime I get approached by someone who's trying to get me to say submit money to this or sign, I'll sign a petition, but I don't have like money and time are two like very limited resources to me. Um, so like I'll, I'll sign something if I believe in it, I'll like go to the website, I'll tell someone or mm -hmm. whatever. But like if giving you money is the only way that I can help, I'm not going to be able to do that um, in all cases. But um, so, yeah, saying you already have a boyfriend or saying I already contribute to your cause is kind of a I'm already win -win. dating you. <laughs> I'm already dating you. No. How does that already contributing to their cause? Because then apply. they will continue to approach you. They can't uh, say I anything. I mean, in a flirtation setting, though, oh, how does oh, that oh. map to this? Does it? No, just a totally separate tangent gotcha. of free That's advice. Also that good advice. You can say you're already doing the thing that they want you to do. Yeah. Um, and then they'll leave you alone. Um, but yeah, saying that you have a boyfriend, uh, that works great. Um, I understand the resistance to not wanting to have to do that, though. Absolutely. That could be frustrating. Well, because it's 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 still avoiding the truth of it, which is I'm not interested in you. Right. And I like because to be as honest as possible. of the way that you look. <laughs> <laughs> right? Um, it's just I'm not open to that type of energy right now. Yeah. Whether it's the time of day that someone approaches you. Their smell. Like 10 a.m. at a parking lot, Their general example. grooming. Um, but aren't there some people that if they approached you at 10 a.m. in a parking lot, you'd be like, well, this is kind of a neat meet cute. <laughs> Um, yeah, the, the line between a meet cute and harassment is very <laughs> <Right>. small. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's hard because we have this like fantasy or this idea that we're going to be walking around and we're just mm -hmm. going to bump into our soulmate. And so people do try that. And I don't think that that dynamic should totally go away, that there isn't the potential to like spark connection in daily life. Um, the problem is People, read men, um, need to take the hint and know when to go away and know, have a better understanding of like, what is the result that they want? What is their intention? Is it pure, whatever? Um, and how to is kind of pure? try to achieve the what result. Does pure they want. intention mean? Pure intention. Um, you know. I'd like to speak to that because she said she wonders if she's subconsciously just thirsty as fuck. Oh, that's right. I completely forgot that, about that yeah. element. Yes, that is a real thing. That like if you – and also, honestly, your um, menstrual cycle, all that shit makes a difference in terms of mm -hmm. what other humans are perceiving about you and how you feel about yourself. All that stuff is totally perceptible on a on an invisible level yeah. um, as you walk around. And so, yes, it might be – this problem might be coming up repeatedly for you because – you're kind of wanting someone to take a chance or, you know, wanting some kind of physical or sexual um, or, or playful. That was the other thing I wanted to say about yeah. the idea of being flirtatious. Flirting is just playing. Like babies flirt, you know? Yeah. Um, and so it's it's really just kind of like if you want to think of it as like entering together this like playful dynamic, it can be a really fun thing. And it doesn't – there's intrinsic value in it. <clears throat> and it doesn't have to be – I want to date you. I want to this. I want to that out of you. I want sex. I want whatever. Some p times, like some people just enjoy flirting. Yeah. I'm one of those people. When you say it's just playing, is it a mm -hmm. certain type of playing? Because I can think of mm -hmm. things that people play that aren't flirting. <laughs> Fire off flirting. some examples. Soccer. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? No, I'm not saying they're synonymous. I think it's playing with um, expressing with chemistry. the impression that that person has made upon you. Mm. So it's it's a mutual engagement in the same kind of co-created space. Okay. I would say, like you, well, you can flirt and be not flirted back with. 
is it still a flirt if it falls upon deaf ears? Mm. If, or if they're <laughs> like, no, I'm being serious. Let's stop. Well, then you're not flirting. You've flirted. You, you <laughs> attempted a flirt. You teed up a flirt. and If you throw a ball and somebody doesn't catch it, you still You're not playing it. catch, though. You're throwing a ball. Well, I'd say one person is playing catch. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, that's where we decide to disagree then. Fair, fair. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I guess you could flirt with yourself. You could, you know, Ooh. be in the mirror yeah. flirting with yourself, practicing. I like that. I've okay. I read. Or trying to fuck yourself. That's good too. <laughs> yeah. I actually I do that sometimes. Yeah. If I'm trying, sometimes if I'm trying to get myself in the mood, like what do you I have do? to kind of regard myself in a certain way mm-hmm. in order to um, be like, ooh, yeah, we're being sexy right now. You know. I've thought about that. That maybe there's a program for men to give themselves a full body massage before they <laughs> masturbate. So that they get in the habit of making it not such a genital focused experience and that would make them better lovers. I think that would make everyone a better lover. Well, I figure women, I'm generalizing, but that more women already do something like that. Right. Like for me, I clean the whole apartment. That's very (laughs) sexy. That's a a precursor to all sex that I have. Yeah. Um, Yeah. I want to address, I heard in this... Mm -hmm request for advice Mm. some undertones of um sex is bad basically which that may be a dominant uh, belief amongst your social circle or like judging yourself or maybe i'm just thirsty like maybe it's i'm oh i see i I think i read that that way a little bit i saw her just looking for an explanation like an underlying explanation but i think what you're saying is something we should do you think so i can look back at it um and while you do that i will make I will begin to lay the groundwork okay. of making a comment on what you just said. Um, yes, we are still in a comparatively, you know, sexually repressed society. Um, America, like um, our friend who was saying that uh, she works for Discovery, right? And she was saying that there was a certain um, show where they had changed the amount of like sex and nudity and like fighting and violence they had diminished that for the american audience versus other audiences internationally um i thought that was super interesting Hmm. and uh yeah i do think that america is we're just blasted with images of sex all the time but from this very like this is a dirty naughty thing not Like, this is a healthy thing that we all have impulses in this arena and engage in and can do so safely. I think the it's, I think you need both ideas to coexist because it Mm. it adds some of the fun to it Mm. to tell yourself that it's bad and I'm going to do it anyway. You know, (laughs) like, I think that there's some human drive towards that kink, that that Mm. adds heat. That it's like overcoming that obstacle of, oh, but we shouldn't. Right, right. That false morality set up. Yeah. It'd be great if there were ways that weren't wrapped up in God or like public shaming or, yeah. I don't really know how to solve that. But I think the sex is hot enough even without the king. (laughs) So it's better to remove them. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, but it's like this we need to like hide our bodies and be ashamed of our bodies. I think that's the area where it's the most. Uh, damaging and it's like we the we're still kind of uh, coming out from the like masturbation is right. dirty and gross um i still am dealing with feelings of guilt and shame um i think that they're related to how um you know women in my family have regarded their own sexuality um and their own bodies and then you kind of just pick that up unconsciously and then at a certain point you 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 get to see other messages and, oh, other women are doing it this way. And at first, that's threatening. At first, a like sexually free woman, yeah. a woman who's more sexually free than you is threatening. She says, i also not looking to date, so all this just makes me appear like a player. That's her concern. Oh, okay. Okay. It, it, to me, it seems like less of a sexual shame and of being a player and more of like she's trying w- to elicit flir- flirtatious responses from many people and it's rude. I think it seems to me she's more concerned with politeness. Okay. I read that as 
being a player is bad. Mm. You don't want to come off as somebody who's like gets around or. I think slut and player are different. Okay. Player to me conjures. I'm just dis- actively deceiving this person and mm. leading them to believe that the only sexual focus okay. that I have. Um, but like, let's fucking talk about it as if it's the same. Cause I think it's a really valid conversation. Um, and I mean, I have fears about the way that I talk about sex on this podcast, even, Mm -hmm. um, that someone who, uh, doesn't have the, in my, what I consider to be the privilege of an environment where they get to see other women who are, um, taking ownership of their sexuality and, and not hiding it, um, feeling like it's wrong or bad to talk openly about sex and like surprise, we all have sex and Mm -hmm. it's like something that, well, a lot of people don't. (laughs) Well, we're all here as a result of sex for the most part now, now not so much, but science is advancing, but like, you know what I mean? Um, people that wipe with just on toilet paper. So (laughs) (laughs) those millions of babies across America. (laughs) <laughs> from the jizzed on toilet paper epidemic of the 1970s. <laughs> a whole generation. <laughs> Women just stopped wiping for a while because you never knew. And thankfully the pill came along. That was The pill was actually an answer to all the toilet paper jizz that was happening. <laughs> um, but no, really, but yeah. in this conversation, like birth yeah. control is a huge thing because it's like now suddenly we don't need religion or uh, these uh, these cultural entities telling us it's morally bad in order to not have sex so for yeah. population control reasons. Now we have the ability to take that into our own hands. And so how do we kind of hold that responsibility that we are humans that can produce other humans, but we don't always want to do that, but we do often want to have sex. Mm-hmm. So um, what's the right balance of sexual energy freely flowing in a conversation that might be flirtatious. Right. Um, we're figuring that out. There are costs associated with actually having sex with a person. Yeah. That are, are social, uh, biological, emotional, mental. Mm-hmm. And I think that you can avoid a lot of those costs and still get a lot of the same confidence boosting benefit from flirting with people. Yeah. That it's like a sex light and it's like releasing steam it out can of be a better. valve. It's like, oh, okay, I got yeah. to kind of get some of that energy out. Yes. And also I think it's an important tool for people that are in relationships. Yeah. Um, to Go out and flirt with other people. To Yes, yeah. to be able to flirt with other people. Um, to still feel that, because your partner is your partner. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, they more and more, the more time and history you have with them, the more interactions and emotional closeness and security and comfort, it kind of goes against that spicy, new, different. The feeling of freedom being uh, capable of Can I attract novelty? someone new and yeah. different now? Yeah. And so I think flirting kind of answers that question, mm-hmm. um, which is why I think it's important to point out to this user again that, that, that flirtation, you don't have to necessarily be worried about is flirtation okay? Because it has intrinsic value. It can be a good thing for people. You can be right. helping them by flirting with them. The world right. needs more people like you yeah. who pay attention to people and Absolutely. notice things about them and make them walk away feeling a little bit more special. Absolutely. And by no means does flirtation guarantee any type of sexual conduct. Right. At yeah. all. Yes. At all. Um, yes, it is often a precursor to it. And yes, people are often assessing, is this person going to let me touch them or kiss them or fuck Mm -hmm. them or whatever? But it does not mean that you have any obligation to do so. And I know how scary and uncomfortable it can be to have to set that boundary once you've kind of engaged in something that some, either you or them or some third party that has no fucking idea what they're talking about views as oh, this person's flirting mm-hmm. or this person wants to fuck. It, they're not the same. They're not the same. Babies yeah. don't want to fuck and they flirt. That's my point I keep going back to. I uh, agree that babies flirt, uh-huh. but babies definitely want to fuck. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, babies can't really fuck yet. Their, their genitals don't work quite the way that they need to. But um, boys do boys get they used to the ancient birthing method was to grab the boner of the baby 
the fetus and yank it out that way. They'd wait until the so water breaking, you know mm-hmm. how a woman's water will mm-hmm. break when she's about to have birth, is actually a, a sharp fetus dick that's gotten hard. <laughs> If it's a but it's f- often, the wall. yeah, and now you're wondering why do how do girls get out? Well, mm-hmm. they uh, often are in there longer because they have to develop more for their nipples to get hard, and then they're yes. kind of working on two different uh, spots Thank in order God to break their way through. And then the doctors the will yank; they'll grab mm-hmm. the baby dick, give it a little mini hand yeah. job, and then yeah. um, yank out the baby. Yeah, great. That way, is there anything else? Any other dimensions of the question? or the topic overall that you feel have not been covered? No, I feel good about this. Yeah, I feel good about this too. I kind of want to just summarize, keep doing what you're doing and work on the rejection side of Mm -hmm. how do you deal with being rejected? Isn't it okay? I like to live by the rule and I think you do too. It's okay to ask as long as it's okay for the answer to be no. Yes. And apply that to other people too. Like it's not the end of the world if someone asks you on a date and you're not interested, they'll get over it. Hopefully, men who are listening to this, it's important to accept rejection gracefully. Mm -hmm. It's not going to make you more attractive to to like fucking pull up, like slam on the brakes in terms of the conversation and then be like, well, fuck you. You're a bitch. Right. Um, Treat someone the way that you would want to be treated, even if they've done something to hurt you by, you know, rejecting some amount of sexual advancing. Um, But yeah, like, oh, Think about also when you reject someone um, or if you're being rejected, anytime you hear the word no, what is that teaching you? How can that be a gift? How can that be a boundary that that is then modeled to you that you can use with someone else? Mm -hmm. Um, Saying no and preserving your own energy and integrity and living the truth from the inside out um, really can help people to understand how to set their own limits. Um, Because I think that that's something that we're not that good at right now. Um, At least this generation has always kind of reports, not always, but often reports like, you know, that they say yes to too many things. They feel spread way too thin Mm -hmm. amongst all the things they have to do. And one more person that's knocking on the door and wants your time and energy, um, maybe the person where you have to draw the line and it doesn't have to say anything about them specifically. Yeah. Um, you're busy. You're not interested in dating. What, whatever the reason you're saying no is it doesn't, it doesn't have to really be anything that great or worthwhile. Just say no, because it's a no for you right now. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's okay. Like we need to get a little more comfortable in that sort of like often what we, helicopter parenting this is like a whole whole thing but um, parents that are (laughs) over anxious yeah perfect let's just throw in something really loaded at the bottom of the episode that's what i was hoping for um (laughs) um the sort of wave of over anxious parenting and all of that whole thing um often neglects the importance of a phase that kids go through when they're very little like maybe one or two that's like a protesting phase where the kid gets to go, no, and they kind of, you know, whether it's rational or not, whatever. It's a phase that kids have to go through. They have to feel like they can put their foot down rationally or mm-hmm. irrationally to set their own limits and boundaries. Um, and then there's sort of a mirror for that that happens in adolescence. Um, and so often people in our generation, um, you know, have who have parents that are doing really great, showing that they care a lot, but there all the time and kind of not allowing a young child to have these no moments and these protests um, and negative, those kind of outbursts of negative emotionality inadvertently give us the message that we're not allowed to say no and we're not allowed to assert our boundaries and assert ourselves. Um, But it's so critical. It's so critical because if everything is a yes, then you're not really saying yes to yourself. Mm-hmm. You're saying no to um, the version of yourself that acts on your highest and best good. Um, and your, what you Your rejections want. strengthen your acceptances. Exactly. Exactly. And then you have more energy and love and kindness to give to people that really deserve that from yeah. you. And you, that you really want to have that energy mm-hmm. to give to them. Um, and it's such a beautiful thing to find a way to say no that you're comfortable with 
Um, so tinker around with different ways of saying no. It doesn't have to be this whole long explanation and excuse about how you're not dating right now. Da, 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 da. It can really be, um, sometimes I like to do something positive or say something positive before I sort of say no to someone. Like, I really appreciate that you've taken the time to notice something about me. I really appreciate the energy that you've put into um, pursuing me. I'm not interested right now. Mm-hmm. No, thank you. It's it's a no and a thank you um, that, that to me can be simple and also, you know, take some of the sting out of a no or, or make it seem a little more like a period at the end of the sentence versus just no, nah, nah, eh. Because if it sounds like a question mark, that mm-hmm. person is going to keep it has a window to keep talking to you, keep doing this, keep doing that. Um, if you make a bunch of excuses and, you know, really try to soften the situation. Um, so I would, the summary for me is get comfortable with the nose, just like Rob said, um, and take ownership and feel good about, you know, the fact that you are attractive to people and people want your attention. Like that's wonderful don't you don't have to be way a way different version of yourself be exactly who you are and tinker with growing in the direction of who you want to be that's good advice <laughs> thanks babe oh, man i'm tired let's let's hit the snooze button let's hit that snooze button thank you guys for listening yeah um give us your feedback email us if you have your own calls for advice to freeadvicepodcast at gmail.com we love to hear from you and hope you have a fucking fantastic week. Till the next time. Good night. Sleep tight. <laughs>